Hi, I'm Imran Haq, SVP of AI and Digital Sciences here at Recursion. I'm a computer scientist by training, and I've spent about a decade in the biotech industry and diagnostics. Today, I'd like to take you through a concrete example of how we apply our unique mapping and navigating technologies to explore both known and unknown areas of disease biology to discover potential new medicines at recursion. Our maps are built using image-based, high-dimensional data that we generate in-house. We conduct up to 2.2 million experiments every week in our highly automated labs, where we captured a cellular response to whole genome knockouts and millions of chemical compounds, as well as other perturbations. To begin exploring these maps, a drug discovery scientist at Recursion might start with a disease that's of interest to them, say, breast cancer. They might use an external data set like the Human Phenotype Ontology to find all of the genes known to be associated with the breast cancer to start their search. If you were to do that, you would get the yellow edges listed in this graph, where you see a number of well-known breast cancer-associated genes, and then you start seeing the relationships that emerge in Recursion's map. Those are the green edges between pairs of genes around the periphery. If you look closely at that list, you'll start to see a number of patterns emerge. For example, right here above breast cancer, you'll see a very tight cluster of the BRCA-associated genes. You may have heard of genes like BRCA1 and BRCA2, sometimes called BRCA1 and BRCA2, PALB2, RAD51, BARD1, all of which are strongly associated with breast cancer. And all of these show up as an extremely tight cluster in our data. Now, one thing that's critical to realize is that we didn't have to encode that similarity into our systems. This all fell out naturally from the data that recursion collects. We perform knockouts in each of those genes, we imaged the cells with those knockouts on our microscopes, put those images through our data pipelines, and these tight associations immediately came out. You'll see other clusters show up as well. Another example set of well-known cancer and breast cancer-associated pathways is RAS-RAF, HER2, PI3 kinase. Again, these are discoveries that took decades of scientific research, which Recursion was able to immediately recapitulate from an automated analysis of our data. But if all we could do was to look at genetics, this would be interesting, but not sufficient to transform drug discovery. And one of the really unique attributes of Recursion's platform is that we don't just see relationships within biology or relationships within chemistry, we can actually see the relationships between the two. So let's zoom into one of these clusters to understand what I mean. We'll zoom into this RAS-RAF, HER2, PI3 kinase group. Zooming into just that set of genes, we can layer on a set of well-known compounds to validate that the relationships we're seeing in our platform are those that you would expect to see. So for example, at the bottom, you'll see a couple of well-known RAF inhibitor drugs, dibrafenib and encorafenib, and you'll see that they have the relationships that you'd expect to find to genes like BRAF. You'll also see other investigational stage molecules, AZD4547 and others at the top and you'll see that they're making the relationships that you'd expect. The relationships between pairs of genes on the last slide and the relationships between genes and compounds on this slide should give you confidence that what our approach is doing is recovering real biology. We're able to recapitulate not only the history of genetic discovery in breast cancer, but also the history of drug discovery in breast cancer for this pathway. But if all we could do is recapitulate history, that wouldn't necessarily show the way forward you'll notice that there are a lot of gaps in this diagram. Let me fill them in for you. What we're showing now is the rest of the compounds in the recursion data universe that show strong associations with the set of genes in this pathway. Now, I haven't labeled them because these aren't approved or clinical stage drugs. These are starting points from recursion's chemical library that we have screened and that show similar associations to these genes. This is the real power of the recursion platform. Not only do we recapitulate massive amounts of biology that we already know about, we also discover new biology that was not known about or that was erroneously marked as not existing. We can then put that biology in relationship to large numbers of chemical starting points in order to initiate and advance drug discovery programs. This, of course, is just a small view of what exists in the recursion data universe and in recursion's maps of biology, about a dozen genes. So let's zoom out. We have over 3 trillion relationships in our maps of biology. 
So what we see here is a very schematic view of what you might see if you were able to zoom out into the entire recursion map. You see associations between diseases and genes in yellow, associations between pairs of genes in green, and relationships among genes and compounds in orange and purple. Our maps are fundamentally changing how we initiate and advance drug discovery programs. Using our massive proprietary dataset, we can explore predicted relationships to identify both known and novel biology that would otherwise require thousands of years of experimentation. In other words, at Recursion, we're industrializing drug discovery. Stay tuned for future series where we talk about the ways we are industrializing other steps of drug discovery.